Hello, everybody. We are back, and we're in the off season now. So bear with me. We're gonna go through a lot of information, and we're gonna hit it hard and fast. Well, not too fast, but a quick look back at the top 25 for this past season: the national champion Virginia Tech Hokies, and this season not. One team. Nobody finished undefeated. There was at least one loss in the loss column, if not more. This was quite an interesting season, as there really wasn't any true dominant team. There are teams that were good and better than others, and as you can see, ODU finishing 14th in the coaches' poll, a 9-4 and record overall. A great first season in the SCC, or ACC, sorry, if you ask me. You know, moving up from the Conference USA, had a rough start to the conference schedule, but really finished strong, and the future looks bright for ODU. Here we look at the season. Yeah, rocky start to open, and then a good finish. Only loss in the last half of the season there to Miami, and that was a very close game that could have finished either way. So, that was quite a season for ODU. My phone's been being weird, so... Take a look at the All-Americans, and David Dixon, yes, is a first-team NCAA All-American among the best players in the country. He came close to a Heisman that Jerome Wright of Virginia Tech took from him. So, let's take a look now at the defense, and Rashad Coward, the defensive tackle... Gets in on the first team All American selections. Quite a season. Lots of things to look forward to, as usual. But also a lot of work to do, as usual, to try and uh, better the team. And I think, you know, it wouldn't be unrealistic to shoot for a division title next season. It won't be easy. But, you know, that's kind of the next big goal we should be shooting for is get the division title play in the conference championship game. Who knows what happens from there? But uh, first we have some things to take care of, some final recruiting action, and then setting up the recruiting for next season and setting up depth charts and all that. So ODU had one team on the NCAA second team selections. Here, a quick look at the freshman All-America team. And uh, ODU did not have anybody on that team, but that's okay. Look at the All-ACC in. Dixon, of course, no surprise there. Uh, the ACC was just really good this season, um, all around. Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, Florida State was pretty solid. Um... Miami was good. It's a very tough conference to play in. So we do have some tough competition to look forward to over the next several seasons if we want to consider actually getting into the talk of a national championship at some point. Again, that's the ultimate goal is to take ODU from basically where we started as a new team in the FBS to winning a national title and it's it's taken us a while just to get to be a good team in a top conference We're still trying to get there so award winners so we can take a look here the top players in the country you know saw a number of these guys on the all-american team already but these are the guys who actually won these awards Dixon fourth in the Doak Walker Award running. Robert Lewis had an epic season for Washington State. And just a quick look at the rest of the awards. But uh, some of you have been asking, am I going to do another Dynasty series? Or, you know, I know some of you have said you want something different. Um, I am going to be doing, going back to doing some Let's Play series as well, because that's kind of where I started my whole YouTubing career, and I want to get back into that. So I've got that starting up. But I want to see this out right now. For 
as far as Dynasty series goes, I want to see this ODU series out. I want to win a national title. I know it's been slow going as far as uploading. Um, I do what I can to get, you know, squeeze some time out of editing and recording and all that. So bear with me. Because I do, I would like at some point to maybe do something like maybe uh, a Madden series or I was thinking more something maybe like FIFA 2 or Pro Evolution Soccer because next to football, soccer is my favorite. You know, soccer and football are like my two favorite sports. Like they're even. I pretty much, I can't choose one over the other. They're both just fantastic. I love both. I've also considered maybe doing a football manager series, which is, that's a soccer PC game for those that aren't familiar. And in my opinion, is the most complete and realistic sports game out there. It's a management game. It's very deep and detailed. So it would be a little bit different. But again, I'm not going to be looking at that just right now. We're going to stick with the Dynasty series because I want to see this out. I am going to throw some Let's Play stuff up because I've been wanting to get back into that and it's been a while. And I'd like to, ver like I've said before, I'd like to keep you know, a little bit of variation on the channel because I know it can, for some people, get a little stale if you just see the same thing over and over. I know you guys do want to see some different things from me than just seeing the same stuff. And I want to do some different things too, so... <laughs> Conference USA West is still a deplorable division. UAB dominated in the East. They have risen since ODU has left. They are the kings of the Conference USA. Miami University in Ohio. Kings of the East in the MAC. Yeah, you know, you can skip around. Obviously, you do what you want. Pause, skip around um, if you want to see more information or if you want to just move past a section. But I show all this because I know at some point somebody's going to want to see this stuff. I will skip a few things in the off season though. Uh, the coaching carousel was kind of boring and uninteresting, which is the definition of boring. So I just repeated myself. So I kind of really I left the coaching changes out because it's not really all that big for me. And, and we can look at those like when, if we play a team. I'll, I'll I always look at the head coach when we play a team to see who's you know look at the coordinators and head coaches to see who we're going up against, so, you know, we'll cover that when we get to it in in the next season, but I'm not going to go through all, every single coaching change, because there's a lot, and really there weren't that many interesting ones, and, uh, yeah, New Mexico State wins the award for no wins, 0-12, everybody, let's check this out, let's see, uh, I'm um, in an overtime loss to Arizona State. I mean, that's Arizona State isn't bad. It's six and seven record, but they're not terrible. Now we'll get to the stats. Yes, Dixon led the country in rushing yards. Pretty amazing. I was just checking out all the leaders here. Chad Robinson, tenth in the country in sacks. Not a bad season. Shane McCarley in his senior year, 2,400 yards, 22 touchdowns, 18 interceptions, 57 completion percentage. Not bad. Not amazing, not really even great, but good enough. Dixon, 1,800 yards, 19 touchdowns, average 7.6 a carry, and he's just a junior. Longest run was 75 yards. McCarley had 278 yards and a touchdown. Sullivan had three touchdowns. Bennett and Hopkins added some carries. And here I like the dis distribution among the top three receivers here. 45 catches for Ellison, 44 for Jackson, 41 for Reese. Jackson led the team with seven receiving touchdowns. Not bad. As you can see, Ellison and Jackson are within one yard of each other. For total receiving yards, 645, 646. So that's pretty interesting. At least I thought so, anyway. Dixon added 19 catches of his own, a couple touchdowns. 
Good stuff. Good stuff. There's some pancakes for you. Put some syrup on that. And then the defense. The seniors mainly making up the uh, tackle totals there. Lots of seniors on defense going to be departing. It's going to suck to have to replace some of these players because they have been staples of the defense for a number of seasons now. But we'll get into that in a little bit with the players leaving portion of the video. So yeah, I always find these off-season videos to be a little bit difficult to do because I don't really know how I really should edit them to make them, you know, a little more interesting. Chad Robinson, nine sacks, coward with seven and a half. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if I should try and do, like, maybe add some little graphics in there or something. Uh, rather than just showing everything that the game has to offer in its glory, but I like to look at all the stats and stuff. I don't know about you guys. I like to see, you know, how everybody did at the end of the season. I like to look at numbers and stats, so that's me. I'm, I'm a nerd that way. Good season. Yes, indeed. Rob Thompson, Jack Tocho. Oh, man. We're really going to miss those two defensive backs. They've been have been so good. Tommy Patrick, sophomore kicker, 16 of 19, not bad. Longest field goal was 49. 100% of extra points. No real shocker there. Missed one field goal from 50 plus. So, next season, it's going to be interesting. Um, this video is just the off season, by the way. The next video will be just the preseason and, and taking a look at the team, and then we'll get into week one. I figured it'd be easier to split the off-season and preseason into two videos instead of doing one super long video, because I just take forever. So then in the next video we can get into all the preseason recruiting and really taking a look at the team and the ratings and all that. Because I know you guys do want to see how everybody's rated. What the players, you know, what they're looking like, who's going to be where in the depth chart. I think it'd be easier to cover that in a separate video instead of making this one like 40 minutes long. I figured that'd be easier. Players leaving. And everybody's leaving for graduation, so nobody going early to the pros. Not really that, I didn't expect anybody to, but if anybody was going to leave early for the pros, I thought it might be David Dixon. Thankfully... He didn't leave early, so we're good. We're saying goodbye to Shane McCarley. Came on in his junior year, and he's just short of 5,000 career passing yards. 40 touchdowns in the two years he played as quarterback. 29 INTs. He added seven rushing touchdowns and 687 yards on the ground. Had a few fumbles. Well, more than a few, I guess. Brian Cook, part of our first recruiting class, didn't really do much because the offense has shifted to not really needing a fullback so much anymore. So he didn't really see that much action. Adrian Bush was behind Connor Martin for the first three years of his career and came on this last season, did a solid job at tight end. Very good blocker, solid receiver. David Farmer, one of the originals of the team, Fifth year senior, Clayton Beats, left guard, another guy that was part of that first recruiting class. You can see how he developed. Not bad, not bad at all. Anderson, one of the originals, one of the last real life players remaining, gone. Eight career sacks, 25 tackles for a loss, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. Not bad. This guy, oh, he was a monster. Shod Coward really only started in the last two seasons. Nine and a half sacks. 19 tackles for a loss. Three forced fumbles. What a beast. He's a uh, pretty nightmarish to handle up front there. 6'6", 303 pounds. Whew. Chris Cleveland. Another 
first recruiting class member. Nine and a half sacks, 30 tackles for loss, 85 total tackles. An interception, two forced fumbles, a fumble recovery. Good career. Wasn't sure how good he was going to turn out. I think he was a three-star linebacker coming out as a recruit. Ended up playing pretty well. Roshan Doherty, I think he was also a three-star recruit out of that first recruiting class. Over 100 tackles, 24 loss, 5 sacks, forced fumble, and 2 fumble recoveries. And he had some good acceleration on there. 93, decent linebacker, originally out of Alabama. We'll say goodbye to him. Kavon Walker, transferred from the University of Maryland. And the last two seasons was a beast. 24 tackles for a loss, over 100 tackles, 2 interceptions, 4 deflections, and a fumble forced. Josh Pitts never really saw that much much action, was a special teams guy. Mostly didn't really do that much. Jack Tocho transferred from North Carolina State in the last 3 seasons, was a starting defensive back, 5 interceptions, 2 sacks, over 100 tackles, one touchdown, 11 deflections. He was awesome. Rob Thompson. 2016, the last time OD was in the Conference USA, won a couple awards, the Bednarik and Thorpe Awards, seven career interceptions, 10 deflections, two sacks, three fumble recoveries. He was excellent. Look at that, 99 awareness to finish his career, 90 man coverage. Very, very good defensive back. Matt Williams really only saw real action in his last season here. Interception in his career, a sack. Didn't do all that much, but did well when he was called up. Marcus Massey, four-year starter at the free safety position. Two sacks, four interceptions, nine deflections. Over 200 tackles to his name. He was really better in, in stopping the run and coming up out of his free safety spot than he was uh, defending the pass. But Now we're going to take a quick look at the draft results. Pretty standard for what we've seen in this dynasty. You know, Alabama just killing it. Georgia Tech, some solid players leaving for them. LSU, as usual, has a good number of players coming out. Um, right now, it's pretty much kind of been the same year to year as far as how many players are going from each team. And then uh, the internet decided to be stupid and pop that stupid pop-up in my face. Ohio State, JT Barrett. It had two quarterbacks go in this draft. Pfft. Oklahoma, three receivers all in the fifth round. I mean, good grief. Oregon, Thomas Tyner. Not bad for them. Now, TCU played the national championship game. Only has one player coming out for the draft. I thought that was pretty weird. Either they're like a team full of juniors or something, or they just shouldn't have been in the national title game when they ended up there. Jerome Wright, the Heisman winner in the first round. No surprise there. That's pretty much it for our draft results. Nothing of note. ODU, again, didn't have any players drafted and now the transfer requests eh these uh I mean I'm not taking okay first of all that defensive tackle Mark Brown I'm not taking him 54 overall even if we reg or not register him but even if we sit him and just let him develop over the next few seasons he's going to be garbage so I'm looking to really improve this team and, and get rid of those kind of players Mark Brown just looks terrible He's strong, but I just don't see much use for him, so we're cutting him out. But we'll take the other two, defensive tackle Evan McCarty out of Tennessee and Matt Ward, tight end out of Navy. We'll at least check them out. If they don't get much playing time in the future, oh well for them. Now, final look at recruiting. Ricky Andrews, Chris Witherspoon, Kevin Watson, Tim Spencer, Jerome Bates are our top prospects I've ordered these guys mostly based on importance so the top five there are really the players we want to get and then any, everybody after that not really 
As you can see, we failed miserably to secure many of these recruits. Demarcus Bellamy, halfback, and Kevin Watson, outside linebacker, have committed, but Navy stole one of the best receivers in the recruiting class of this season. Navy! He's not going to catch so many balls! So, yeah. I don't know, guys. We finished 63rd in the country in recruiting, so that's basically right down the middle. Right smack in the middle of everybody, so... Better than the worst, but worse than the best, basically. Uh, I think a few of those guys are walk-ons. They're those one-stars. A few of them are walk-on players. I don't know if they're really going to... I don't really plan on keeping many of those guys because they're not rated very highly at all. But, uh... Notes. Four-star DeMarcus Bellamy, 6'4", 215, running back Joshua Kemp. An athlete who looks like a small quarterback. And Alabama tops the recruiting class. So, they get basically the most players in the draft. Top recruiting class, so what else is new? <laughs> Top 15 here. As you can see, a number of ACC teams making appearances. The ACC has done very well in recruiting. Arizona rounds out the top 20 and the top 25 to Arizona State. Not bad, not bad at all. And Bowling Green gets the terrible award for worst recruiting class. And now we have two athletes who we need to allocate positions to. Joshua Kemp, who is athletic and has very solid throw accuracy for coming right out the gates. And Reggie Bolin looks like an excellent defensive back. I don't see Kemp being a very good defensive back. He could be solid in a few years' time. But he looks like a better quarterback out of the gates. He's got much better accuracy than Josh Silva had coming in as a freshman. He doesn't really look like all that good of a defensive back. I think we've got better players in place. So I think it would be a waste to put him at DB. And he comes in as an 80 overall quarterback. As a freshman, for goodness sake. Reggie Bolin, the six foot six athlete, goes to free safety. He's gonna look very good in that position. And he's gonna be a monster. Six foot six. Good grief. What a beast he could be. But that was his best position free safety, so that's that guys. This has been the off season. I hope I covered everything that you wanted to see. Next time we'll get into all the preseason setting things up and getting ready for next year. I'll see you all next time.